Oh, really? Yeah. What was the conclusion? So, just so I'm not uh, repeating. We didn't, we didn't reach a conclusion, we agree, agreed to disagree. Oh, really? Uh, ah, okay. We were talking about uh, religion and uh, why we're here and how we, how we came to be. Here's, be before we even start, um, with the rings, sometimes people have their own preconceived notions that, oh, he must be a biker, he must be this, he I might be that. You are, yeah? <laughs> okay. Uh, g give me the rationale behind it and... Um, the rationale? No. Aesthetics. You just love the design, yeah? Aesthetics, yes. And the... Uh, and love the weight. Uh, yeah? my figures, yeah. Wicked. And the bike, you've got one of those... those. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> because I didn't want to, you know, sometimes you bring up a certain stereotype and the person gets yeah, upset. He's like, course. I'm a teacher actually. You can ask. Is it okay if he clips that mic on you? Sure. So, my name's Zishan. I'm Rui. 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 Okay. Like Louis, but with an R. Wicked, wicked Rui. So Rui, uh, you've spoken a bit about Islam, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. But just out of interest, um, you're from the UK, America? No, Portugal. Portugal, fantastic. So seeing what's going on in the world at the moment, and what you're hearing about Islam, any misconceptions that come to your mind, or no. any questions that you have? At all. I have, I make no misconceptions. Well, I try, at least I try to not not to make any any misconceptions, and I definitely don't blame terrorism or whatever on a religion. That's very interesting. I blame, I blame it. I blame it on radicals that exist in every religion. No, in every culture, actually. Okay, fantastic. What's helped you see things in a certain way? Because I've seen a lot of intelligent folk get you know, um, pigeonholed into believing that sort of thing or even falling in that rabbit hole. You yourself are holding a view which we try to encourage people to do, which is don't follow the adherents, look at the religion. Don't judge the religion by the followers of the religion. That, that's just the thing. I don't look at the religion. I have my own beliefs or lack of. Uh, I look at people, basically. And there are good people everywhere, in every religion, in every non-religion, everywhere. Everyone's, everyone's basically different. Do you feel people... There are good people and bad people everywhere. Do you, do you feel that people judge you by the way you, you look? Of course they do, and I just laugh. I just laugh it off. Do you, do you think that, that contributes to you not wanting to repeat what you go through with other people? Well, uh, the best I can do is uh, give them advice on how I deal with it. Which is, basically, if you don't like it, there are a whole lot of people to look at. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. So, Rui, yeah? Rui. Rui. So, Rui, um, what is your current position about a creator of the cosmos? Uh, well, with the lack of evidence uh, I trust in nature I believe I believe well not believe because there's no way yet uh, of knowing but uh, I tend not to believe things without without actual proof so when you say proof are you talking about empirical proof proof that you can touch proof well I believe I trust in science basically I trust in science science so if uh, something has not been formulated by science yet, you're inclined to disbelieve it? I'm inclined not to disbelieve it. Uh, I'm inclined to not believe it until I have proof of, proof of it. I'm doubtful. And that proof, would you say, has to be empirical or you accept other proof like logical proofs, philosophical proofs, testimony? Proof is proof. Proof is proof. Brilliant, fantastic. Because some people, they try to use the word proof, but they just go for empirical proof. So The empirical, well, empirical proof will come uh, soon, sooner or later. Uh, many of the things that we have today as science were once magic. Yeah, 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 exactly. 
so and, and many... they were not empirical proof because uh, technology or or process of thoughts uh, were not there were not there yet to to reach to, to reach those conclusions. In fact, even uh, for example, there are two principles that are somewhat popular. Like Einstein says, moral questions. Moral questions is not something that science can answer or that it claims to answer. No. So that's something uh, there, out there of the scope. Di di different, different fields. Exactly. Moral, morals are one thing, science is, is another thing. Di different things, spirituality is a whole, a whole other different thing. And also science explains the how, but can't explain why. That again is a subtlety that's also positive. Sometimes. Sometimes it can, sometimes it can. I'll give you an example. Someday, someday I trust it will. So I'll give you an example. Because science relies on empirical, empirical evidence, more specifically induction. Yeah. yeah? And let's just say there's a cake that's baked and it's in the kitchen and somebody says, using science, prove to me why that, create, why that cake was made. So you start, you take out your, your beaker, your Bunsen burner, you set everything and then you take samples and everything, yes. A scientist will be able to tell you the composition of the cake. Yes. They'll be able to tell you the nature of... Basically, they, they can tell me how it came to be, not how it got there. Yes, not why it's there. And why can only be explained if I call my aunt and she comes and says, oh, I baked you that cake because you've done well in your studies this week. Exactly. Okay, wicked. Um, so when it comes to science, you, do you believe in the Big Bang theory, steady state? Like, where do you pitch your tent? Well, I tend to believe uh, I tend to believe Big Bang because currently it's the most plausible explanation, but not a definite explanation yet. Okay, and evolution, you believe it's a good yes. working mo yes. model, yeah? Exactly. Okay, so when it comes to uh, Islam and our belief in a God, the reason why we say, because we believe that evolution, Big Bang, uh, law of gravity, whatever it is, these are all mechanisms. Of course. Yeah? And we believe you have mechanisms, but we believe God is a creator of mechanisms. Yes, that's I why do we that. don't, yeah, that's why we don't believe the two contradict. What we say is God and the nature of things, that is going into metaphysics and philosophy. That's not something that science claims to answer, and that's why we need yes. to go into. But when you say yet, though, um, how would, if, if science goes by induction, things that you must experience or see, and, then, and God by nature is something that you can't see? Yet. Yet. That's my point. So you believe that we can see God in the future? I believe that, that if there is a God, someday, yes, we, we might be able to see. Like in person? Like in person, some manifestation, uh, something. Ru uh, Rui. Rui. Yes. Rui. I would argue we already have the manifestation. And the manifestation that I would argue, using objective um, criteria, is design. Now, there are certain objective, like I know you've been given this argument. Um, however, certain objective designs, for example, the golden ratio. Yeah? The golden ratio, symmetry, are objective ways that we can see beauty and design. If I, I would argue that that same design also has flaws. And a perfect God would not create those flaws. Unpack that for me. Uh, well, um, disease for instance. No, let's stick with the golden uh, ratio for the now. Gold, the, the, the golden because that's ratio. objective. Objective, yeah. golden ratio. Okay, so the golden ratio uh, doesn't doesn't allow for some people in certain parts of the globe to to be as comfortable as other other people on the other side of the globe. Uh, it also gives you uh, storms. Uh, devast devastating earthquakes and and the such, which, in my view, a perfect loving God who would create those wouldn't include that in the golden ratio. Okay, this is got solar flares that affect uh, people, animals. Um, you had, which I do believe, the the meteorites that 
came came to be and and wiped the dinosaurs and a whole whole lot of, of other species. And that was just one of the mass extinctions that will someday happen again and wipe us all out. That's for me it's more of a silver ratio, not a golden ratio. Right. So there's a few things that you brought in here. I think you brought in the problem of evil here as well. Um, no, I didn't, didn't bring evil because... Uh, yeah, the problem evil, of evil... Evil, evil is, a, is a concept. Evil, evil, evil is a, a moral thing. And it's different for... We have about 8 billion people in this planet. And the concept of good and evil is probably... You probably can have 8 billion different then, concepts. Then why would you say a volcano or earthquake or these things that you mentioned to be... Um, like the reason why you took it from gold to silver obviously silver is less than gold so the examples that you've given me are examples of well they're negative things otherwise you wouldn't have taken it down they to are, silver isn't they it? They are examples of a not perfect design. Yeah but that's yeah but not perfect how though? Like a tornado why is that imperfect design? I believe it's imperfect design uh, according to, to if it was created by a loving God. I no but where's that criteria of an of a all loving God coming from? When you say all loving, you mean no, a, lo a loving, a uh, loving God. That's but loves but surely, death. but surely can be compat. Uh, you, there can be compatibilism. You can have a loving God, but a loving God could also be doing things that seem negative to us or bad or whatever synonym you want to use. Um, but there could be a reason for it, and our reason uh, or our understanding, because our you know our entire scientific endeavor relies upon induction which is the limited observations that we see in front of us yes. so our limited observations today tell us that a tornado is committing destruction uh, but our limited observation is not telling us the positives that it is doing would you argue that there are positives that we may not know that's why we can't necessarily say that it, that's a negative I would agree uh, I would agree that there might be positives but um a God that is all-powerful, that can create everything in a perfect way, would create everything in a perfect way, giving only positives and not negatives like... Why is that the criteria babies. though? Why, why is Kill that... Why, why, why is not, that the, not the baby one, not the baby no, no, one. No, that, yeah, that, we'll come to the baby one. That is, that is an example. Uh, a tornado that just killed a newborn. A perfect God, the loving God, could, could create somewhat, somehow same effect without killing that, that right baby. right okay so there are a few points to mention there our concept of god is we don't believe god is only all loving we believe he's the most kind the most merciful he is just and for justice and if we've got free will as well we believe in compatibilism as well that there's free will well free will and determinism yeah but uh, compatibilism um, of free both free will and determinism doesn't quite mix with me because if things are predetermined then how can we have free will? No, but it's the same with atheists because atheists have to pitch their tent somewhere. Whether it's free will, whether it's determinism, whether it's compatibilism, that's why you, you have your own schools of thought amongst atheism either, as well. For me, it's either one or the, or other. the other. That's fine, we'll come to that. But here, when you're saying that God is all loving, we're saying that we believe God is just, He is loving. However, just means that a bad punish, a bad person or bad thing needs to be punished. There has to be good, there has to be bad, and we believe this world to be a test. And couple that with free will, there is choice, there is consequences, and we don't believe this world has been made to be perfect. This is an assumption that we don't accept. We believe, the pa we believe paradise is perfect, and when you go there, there you can look at the um, creation and stuff like that, and there you won't be able to find any flaws. However, in this world, this assumption that uh, because it's a perfect God, therefore there needs to be a perfect uh, creation, we don't necessarily accept that assumption. What we say is this world has been created deliberately as a test, therefore there are deliberate flaws that have been put in. For example, poverty, killing, murder, these are negative things that have been put in to see how we will do away with these things. And that is one of our tests in this world. And with that, I would argue, if God is, uh, knows everything, sees everything, <coughs> he already knows whether you're going to pass or fail that test. 
So I don't see a reason why create a world just for the test instead of just creating the, the, the paradise world. No, but there's the, this is in the wisdom of God. Why he created us is only something that he can really answer. Exactly. And he does. Exactly. Yeah, he says he's created us to get to know him, to worship him, to love him. And that's another yeah. thing uh, that sounds more like a narcissistic God creating, creating people to worship me. But this is based upon your understanding at the yes, moment, of course. isn't it? Of course. That, remember you said even when it comes to scientific principles, scientific principles, this is our understanding right now. So that is your current understanding of God, or is a narcissistic God? No, it's not my current understanding of God. My current understanding is because of all this, I so don't see based on induction. There, being, there being a God. Right, or right, least, right. Or at least not the, the concept of an all-loving uh, all God. Because I did play Sims when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I do remember how fun it was to leave him on a pool and yeah. let him drown. Mm. So, so I, I'm more inclined to believe that there are imperfect, that if there is a God, he would be an imperfect God with, with emotions. Um, someone like um, the, the Roman gods or the, the Greek gods. But why, if God is perfect, he must create nope. perfect creation? What's the link? Why is there a link? Why do we have to accept that link? Because, no, I, I'm not saying that if he is per if he, if, if he's perfect, he needs to create he needs to create perfection. What I'm saying is, if if he's loving, he would not need to create suffering. But then, how does that? How is that compatible with free will then? Because how isn't is determinism he, compatible with free will? Well, that's uh, that's the question of morality, then, isn't it? That's what we'll have to go into, and that's something even that's, like uh, that's, that's, that's the a, one thing that we we cannot we cannot know for sure. We can have faith. We can yes, believe. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But we cannot know. So we, we don't know the mechanisms, mechanisms behind the compatibilism between determinism and free will. Exactly. Like an analogy, it's very difficult for people to give analogies of and, those things. And because, because we don't know, I cannot choose one answer or the other. No, but what I'm saying is that, that doesn't, like, what, that's something that somebody that believes in God, doesn't believe in God, both have to contend with. That doesn't negate the existence of God. No, that, but it doesn't yeah. prove it either. It doesn't, it doesn't. But, exactly. but why, that's, that's, that's exactly my point. Yeah, but, the, but my point is slightly different. My point is that if we have free will, and those free will have consequences, like a human being that has free will, if you cross the road with your eyes closed, you're going to get hurt. Yeah, if you it are... might get hurt. Well, most likely, most likely. If you are in an area in which you've been warned that, you know what, this tornadoes come, and you've been sitting that day with headphones in, then you can't blame God for that. That's why I'm saying. But yeah. if you are in an area where you don't know a tornado is going to come, that's not got nothing to do with free will, yeah. and that's everything to do with God's creation yeah. that just came in and killed me without without warning. But here's the difference between our theologies now. Why, whereas you believe that when you die, that's it, everything ends. We believe that. I don't, be I don't believe. I just don't know. You that's, don't know. That's, that's, that's the issue. A current, I don't know currently, I don't know anyone who went went to the other side and came back and came back to say something. Right. Tell me how it was. So, at now, the moment, do you believe in the I, afterlife? At the moment, I don't. I don't believe or or don't believe. Or I don't, just don't. You're know. agnostic about it. I don't know. Okay. So, whereas one person may say that uh, off, there is no after death. Once you die, you die. As Muslims, we believe this world is finite. So whereas people magnify the problems that happen in this world and they say, oh, God should have told you to protect you from that. We say that, look, God not telling you doesn't necessarily mean that you've lost out because you have something called the hereafter that we believe in, that there's paradise and you will be rewarded for that action. Whereas somebody that doesn't believe in an afterlife and they believe all that there is is this world, naturally they will assume that you've been wronged and if you die, you know, this is, this is unfair. Yeah, you've died in a tornado and you didn't know and, you know, and that's why there's a concept in Islam as well that if a person is in a remote village and they haven't 
known God, no one's told them about God, they're not going to be penalized for eternity in the hellfire. Yeah? Um, Islam has to have reached you in a pristine form, not even in a distorted form as well. And there are many cases in which there is in intervention of God, but for people to say, oh, according to me, that baby died and you know what, oh no, terrible, God is terrible. We would say, but why end the story there? That baby, when it passes away, we believe that an innocent baby, if it passes away, goes straight to paradise. It doesn't have to go through the trials and tribulations of this world. So why did he come, come into this world? Who? That baby. Why? So if he, if he, if he is born and immediately, he's, if he is born, he is here for, let's say, a year, he gets leukemia. He suffers, he dies, he makes his whole family, friends suffer and goes straight to paradise. Because... Why did he come here? Yeah, because coupling with free will, you have something called cause and effect. Now, if two people have intercourse and the sperm and the ovum, they fertilize, the child is going to come. That's a natural consequence. Otherwise, if a person... So, so you're telling me that... There is that cause and effect. That baby should, should have never come. come. No, it, I'm, it, I'm it, saying... It, it, it was just a product of free will of, of two other people. And so because it, he should have never come, he's immediately taken to paradise. I'm saying that couple both of them together, the baby is a product of cause and effect. Yes. However, if we now go to the moral side of the argument about the fate of the baby, I say the baby is going straight to paradise without going through the trials and tribulations of this world. So there's but he a... he did go through the trials and tribulations of this world. Not necessarily. He well, went, he, if, if a one-year-old got leukemia through, through his whole life, he suffered. And without any need for that. Are you talking about a baby or an infant now? A baby or an infant, whatever. Yeah, so a child that's got leukemia, again, it's through cause and effect. If you're living in an area in which uh, there are loads of, well, I don't want to go into conspiracy theories, but certain, you know, waves or whatnot in certain okay. areas, you're more likely okay. to get okay. cancer. Forget, forget leukemia. Yeah. Uh, tree fall, falls, down on, falls down on a kid. Yeah. So if a tree falls down on a kid, again, I can't second guess God, but with the limited understanding that I have, the boy will now be a test for the parents. How are the parents going to live grieving of the child? Are they going to lose hope or are they going to appreciate that, look, God gave us this gift, God took it away, you know, us to bear with patience. And those parents that have lost a child, like for example, without becoming sentimental, certain things that I've gone through, if I hadn't gone through uh, Rui, I wouldn't be able to resonate with other people that have gone through it. I get, I, I, I get, I get that. And, and that's why those but parents will, I think, be I get, I better that. equipped to help but, those people suffering. But why does the child, the uh, human being, has to be an instrument for, for, from God and suffer through, 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 throughout his existence just so the parents can learn a lesson or something? Because it doesn't make sense. Because we don't accept this notion of suffering as a principle of morality. It's not a principle it of morality. Is, it's, it's, it, is a, it is a fact. Yeah, the, it's the, called the harm the principle. Kid, the, kid, the kid suffers, the kid exists, the kid suffers, and he ends up just being an instrument for, for the parents to, right. to learn. Something. Let me just complete this point, yeah? So, us utilizing the harm principle as the be all and end all of morality is not something that we entertain. We say ultimately whether something is harmful or non-harmful, for example, going to the gym. Yeah, a person goes to the gym, oh, you know, my biceps are aching and this and that, your trainers are like, you shut your mouth. You're coming tomorrow. We're doing triceps tomorrow, yes. buddy boy. I'm speaking like Hulk Hogan because you give me some Hulk Hogan vibes. I get it. So in that sort of sense that we, when you go to the harm principle, then a person's juggling like, oh, it's never hit a woman. You can never hit a woman. But then that match that took place in the Olympics where one person uh, is considered a man because of the chromosomes, another was considered a woman. And again, like if a woman's transitioned into a man, can you now beat her up in a boxing ring if there's a referee there and you get, do you see? So we, we don't say that the harm principle that can be manipulated by circumstance or by people is the criteria and the be all and end all. I know in certain philosophical and theological discussions they do bring the harm principle, but what we say is that the, uh, theology and what God says and what God has revealed, which again we can go into the evidences about scripture and the likes, we say that is a better criteria than the harm principle which can be manipulated and changed by people and their thinking as well. 
So as a harm principle, we think that the baby has been hurt, yes, but the overwhelming pleasure that, they, that the baby will receive thereafter outweighs the harm. For example, if we're having an arm wrestle, yeah, you're harming me, but if I beat you, if you beat me, that bit of harm compared to the overwhelming amount of pleasure that we gave and consent and this and that, so many principles, we're okay with that sort of stuff. But here, the only thing is that because of our limited understanding, oh, uh, that baby seems like he's suffering or that person they're suffering, and because we, somebody may believe that the world ends there and there, then that's it, you know, we believe that they've been wronged. However, when they see the pleasures of the hereafter and they realize that that person's going to get multiple manifolds, reward and pleasure, and you know what they want thereafter then you're saying okay on balance and probability of the, everything it's fair enough like it makes sense still i don't see why with with that concept i don't see why there needs to be a, a, a test world and a paradise world why not there just be a paradise world but Ruby, the the question still remains there also the default uh, the thread of a question throughout the whole thing just because that issue of yours Yes, is there? I don't, I don't, under, I don't understand. Yeah. And because I don't understand. But that uh, doesn't disregard. And with, and with, and that doesn't disprove the, uh, God. No, it doesn't. But yes. it doesn't prove it. It doesn't. It doesn't. Prove it either. I didn't use so, that as an evidence so, of God. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's 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 all I'm saying. Yeah. Until that it doesn't disprove God. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Until the day I see. Yeah. That there is the there is a proof. Yeah. I just remain doubt. Okay. That's all. So that's all. Would you say, let me take you through a similar thought experiment, it's called the contingency argument, yeah? This is a philosophical argument. Existence classified are put in three, yeah? A dependent existence, an independent existence and an impossible existence. Yes. Would you say that there are any other existences that I've missed out? Probably not. Okay. So. That a dependent existence philosophically is char characterized in three things. It cannot cease to exist. It, uh, sorry, a dependent existence can cease to exist, can be any other way, and is composed in parts. Yeah? And a, a uh, independent existence cannot cease to exist, is not composing of parts, and cannot be any other way. And the third one is an impossible existence, like a squared circle, yeah, that we can park for now. So, bearing these two existences in mind, would you say that the universe is dependent or independent? And yourself in the universe is dependent or independent? Like I told you, I don't know. Okay, yourself, let's start with yourself. Are you dependent or independent? I, I myself am dependent. And let's say you depend on oxygen. It depends on a lot of things. A lot of things. And those things, let, um, one, example is, one example is oxygen. Yes. Is that dependent or independent? Oxygen. Oxygen is dependent. Everything is dependent. Okay, fantastic. Now here's the question, Rui. Even the creator, if it exists. But here's the thing, let's not jump the gun. So you depend on that thing, that depends on that thing, that depends on that thing. Exactly. And if you go on ad infinitum, that doesn't necessarily make sense because infinity doesn't exist in the real world as we know it. Yeah? Now here's the you question. Have, you have a starting, starter point. Yes. That's, that's your case. No, my case is that you cannot have an infinite regress of dependent things. For us to exist in yes, this world, there need, has to be an end to that chain and necessary and existence. Exactly. Do you accept that there is an end to that chain yes. called a necessary of existence? Course. Okay. So that necessary existence what do you characterize it as? What, what characteristics do you think it has? It can be nature, it can be a creator. Okay. I don't know. Okay, let's, let's continue. Would you agree with me that that necessary existence is independent? Yes. Has to be. Would you agree with me that that necessary existence has immeasurable power? I wouldn't know about power. I would, I would go about uh, Let me chain, break re it. chain reaction. Let me break it down for you then. If we depend on something, that thing has more energy than us. 
So the thing that you depend upon Not has more energy. Think, things can go on, on, on chain reactions. This is, the, this is a, actually a scientific and a philosophical principle. Uh, allow me to give you a few examples. For example, a human being, yeah, um, plants, animals, no matter how big the tree is, no matter how big the elephant or the hippopotamus is, it relies upon the sun. Yeah? The sun has immense amount of energy Doesn't and power. Only on the sun relies on a whole lot of other things. Yeah, nuclear fission, we don't get into the kind of quantum mechanics of things. It's the same even with battery. Yeah? If battery or fuel, your car relies upon fuel. So that fuel needs to have more energy than the car, yes. otherwise the car can't function. So if you have all of these things, depending on the necessary existence, all of it, for its energy and its survival, then surely that necessary existence has to have immeasurable power to keep everything going. Yes. Make sense? Fantastic. Now here's the thing that's a bit contentious. Bear with me. The third thing that I would argue that the necessary existence should have is will. Yeah? No. But that's why I said bear with me. <laughs> exactly. I'm bearing with you. Because I knew. I, I knew. Yeah. So here's where I would say it would have will because we are contingent beings. In other words, we could have been any other way. So our arm could have been, you know, hair, nose could have been hair or, you're you gonna know, whatever. Me about, you're going to tell me about design? No. Just bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. So when it comes to will, will is indicative of a choice being made. Yes. The mere fact that this, what we see around us, came at one moment and not another moment indicates intentionality. No. For example, an analogy. A painter who's sitting down who at the moment doesn't know what he's painting. When an idea comes to mind, he puts his paintbrush to the canvas and that's now the beginning of his painting. But more importantly, or, that's an indicative, that's or, indicative or, of will. Or he tipped a paint, a paint bucket, it fell, on, it fell on the canvas and produced something. I got you. I, I know where you're going. That, that, but just, that doesn't involve will. But just bear that with me. That involves an accident. Still bear with me here though, yeah? The painting is there as well. I got you. And I like that point and I'll come to it. I, I've heard that point. So just bearing with this uh, more simpler example, the paintbrush in the hand of an artist, when he's about to paint it, that indicates a choice being made. Another example of a choice being made is you could even look at the schemes. If, for example, the tree could have been red, could have been pink, could have been this, that, but green has been selected as a choice, yeah, that indicates a will. So, the, both of these two so examples... If, if, if the tree was red, that wouldn't indicate a choice? No, that would indicate a different choice. The mere fact or that... it could be just how it came to be. No, but just how it came to be then leads us to the concept of chance as a, exactly. as a creator, which then which then makes you fall under the fallacy of reification, which is you're giving concrete properties to something which is abstract. Because you don't believe that chance creates stuff, you believe chance describes things. No, I do believe chance creates stuff. Just like I said, I, uh, I, I accidentally uh, kicked a bucket and, and, and paint went, went into, into, into the canvas. No. It's, a beautiful, it's a beautiful canvas. And I'll sell it for 10,000 for 10, no. pounds. We're doing well, we're doing well, but just stick with me. Let's... I'm sticking with you. Because when you kick that, you've, you've nullified your example because you're the one kicking it. It's not yeah. chance that did it. No, it, it was chance because it wasn't, it wasn't done by Will. I didn't But it was do done that. by it you. An, but it was an accident. Yeah, but if, if we're observing your action, the movement and the motion is coming from you. It's coming from me, but not by choice. Not by choice. But Not you, by, nor by will. Well, we can argue that it depends. No, no I can argue that I didn't. I didn't choose. Or I didn't want. To well, the, well, that means that you're going with the deterministic school of thought with, when it comes to morality. But let me give you another example you got of. Two minutes. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm, like to catch. I'm conscious. I'm conscious. Okay, I'll stick with the two minutes. Let's stick with chance. Yeah, chance. Creating stuff falls in the fallacy of reification, like I said, because chance, when you give it, when you give it concrete properties, what you're doing is you're giving it a consciousness, you're giving it a mind, you're giving it an agency. By saying everything was created by chance, what you're in essence saying is everything was created by the rolling of a dice. The rolling of a dice doesn't necessarily create something. A person rolls the dice or accidentally or closing his eyes and then chance is done as an explanation as a, as a um, description 
not as a creation. Yeah, chance. You can't say that chance itself is now making this thing happen. Chance is a descriptive force or descriptive concept that we're using to is describe our understanding of what's around us and the descriptive nature of the things around us. What I, what I'm, what I can tell you is chance was the first, was the, the first the, the first lighting of the fuse and everything after that is determined by the chain reaction of everything. Uh, do me one favor, I'm conscious you have a flight. Just Google one thing. It's called the fallacy of reification. Fallacy that, of reification. Yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful, but that summarizes the last point that I mentioned to you. I know how m m crazy it is when a person misses a flight. Rui, it was a pleasure. If it was you're a ever, pleasure talking to you. If you're ever in the neck of the woods again, please make sure you drop by. Will do. Where can I see, where can I see this? Uh, there's a few channels. Um, SF. Is, is it the same? Uh, no, there's a few. There's a few different channels. Okay, so uh, you, you can uh, just just put in the speakers corner, speakers and then corner. sort it out yeah. by date, and you and you'll appear. Smile to Jannah Extra. That's one channel you can type in. It should be up in two days. Smile. Sorry. Smile to. You can write this down. Smile. S. Two. Uh, J A N N A H. J A N N A H and then extra. E X T R A. Yeah, it's auto corrected it. Jenna? And then space and then E X T R A. Extra. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'll look for it. Rui, pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Take care, brother. Bye bye. bye. Uh, Rui, I'll just take the mic, yeah? Oh, yeah, nice. No, no, of course. Right. <laughs> You'll be on there. <laughs> the video will be ongoing. <laughs> and a picture. Yeah, go for it. Let me take one as well. Uh, bro, take a picture. Pleasure, Rui. Take Pleasure. care, brother. You too. Walaikum salam. How are you? Okay. Very big fan of you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Is it okay if I take a picture? Yes, yes, of course. Thank you, sir. Thank you, brother. You're doing great. Thank you. Thank you.